It is finally reveal day. I have been teasing you guys that I got a new car for a while now. Now I actually bought this car many, many months ago, but I was waiting for the perfect moment to tell everyone about it because I wanted this thing to be a little more sorted and drivable by the time I did reveal it. And today is the day. I am so happy for many different reasons for this car. It just might be one of the coolest cars that I have now. And I'm so excited to finally share it officially with you guys. I've given a lot of hints along the way. I showed you guys my jacket on Instagram and a few other videos. Some of you guys did guess it correctly, but now I can finally tell you that I got a 1998 Kansai service built Evo 5. Here it is. <laughs> This is my 98 Kansai service built Evo 5 that I could not be more excited about. I never really gave Evos a chance and I guess what I mean by that is I never had older Evos around me or accessible to drive so I never had like a real appreciation for them except for like their rally background obviously and definitely you know the first time that I drove Adam's Evo 5 I knew I had to have one. Everything about this car from the gearbox to like how it's ratioed as well the power all-wheel drive it is just so light and nimble and fast like everything about this car I wanted to have and I knew I would never drive Adam's car really hard because it wasn't my own and for me it's like it makes me very nostalgic of like my rally racing days and I still really really love rally cross racing and hope to continue to do it at some point but this is my kind of car and like I said for the first time that I drove an Evo 5 I knew I had to own one now I did not expect to own one this soon whatsoever. This kind of came up randomly really with the last time that I was in Connecticut. This is only my second time here and the last time I was here I was looking at this thing not running and very lonely inside of Grant's garage. This was actually formerly Tommy's Evo and then I think Adam bought it for a little while and then eventually Grant bought it 
and it has never really been running before myself. And I saw this car the last time I was here and it was just so weird. It had all of these little things that I would have wanted for my five when I was planning to get one like down the road. It's a five, which I prefer the five over the six body wise. And it also had the six interior swap, which is in really good condition. And that's what I would have wanted. It's an amazing like blue, purple, lilac going on. I don't know the exact color, but I love it. And I really would have wanted that interior and this car had it. Also, this car was built by Kanzai Service in Japan and has a built engine already, has the history with Kanzai Service. And there was just so many other like weird little things about this car that every time I learned more, I was like, oh, I want it, I want it. The body is in really good condition. The paint was in great condition as well. And Grant had kind of lost interest. You know, he really wanted a 90. And I just saw this thing in there and at first I was joking around. I was like, hey Grant, you should totally sell me your Evo. Like, come on, sell me your Evo. And I knew he wanted a 90, so I was trying to like show him photos of that Daisy X90 life. And now we're here. So I bought my first right-hand drive and very first all-wheel drive car. This is it. I am already in love so much. And I actually bought it, like I said earlier in the video, I bought it months ago. Now, when I bought it, it wasn't running. Even throughout exchange of hands of Tommy, Adam, Grant, it was never really running. It had the FCON ECU in here that no one really knows how to tune in the US and is kind of outdated. I think the only time it was running is like when Tommy had it running to move onto the trailer when he got it, but it was not running good at all. It was really, really bad. I got the car months ago, made the deal happen. Thank you, Grant. And in exchange, Grant ended up getting his dream car as well. He has this super clean, amazing Daisy X90 that I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to take out when I drive. And it all worked out, everyone's happy. But I got it a few months ago and I knew that before I revealed it, I wanted it to be running so that I can enjoy it and that we could send it to Florida where I could use it as my daily and continue to build the car. So there's actually been a lot that's been done to the car by our friend Justin at Morfab Industries who's been working on it since I've been gone so that I could now show up and just pick her up. And I'm really excited about this car. I'm so happy too to have my first all-wheel drive car. You know, I raced in Rallycross in the Red Bull Global Rallycross series and loved all-wheel drive racing, but I never owned my own all-wheel drive car or a right-hand drive car. So this is a really big moment for me. Like I said, the first time I drove a five, I knew I had to have one. Like, I feel like if I was a car, I'd be this car. And that, that's a big statement. That's a really big statement for me because I think it would either be, I would be this car or I would be like a street ported FD. Like me, if I had to choose, those would be like the two cars I would say I would be, but this is definitely like my spirit animal as a car. Um, so this is really huge for me. I'm loving it so much already. So there you have it. This is my big announcement and reveal. I officially have my own Evo 5 and not just any Evo 5. I have one that is special, has some history in Japan being built by Kanzai Service, which I actually want to dig a lot more into and find out, you know, what was this car to them? Was it a demo car? Was it just like tracked once car? Was it a street car for like one of the people there? I don't know. Was it just a, a customer that came in and had them build it? Um, I'm definitely going to try and track down more information. I do have some info that goes over kind of how the engine was built and what internals might be in there. Uh, a lot of it was a gray area when initially buying the car and I definitely have never bought a car before with it not running ahead of time. So that was a little scary, but I'm really excited to dig into the history of this car a little bit more and continue to build upon it. I can just continue to ramble on and on because I love this car so much. I love it so much. I need to get you guys up to speed with everything that's been done to it to get to this point, which is driving and amazing. So let me give you the real quick rundown and we'll go from there. <laughs>
Okay, so one of the first things I mentioned is that the car wasn't running because it was set up on FCON, which is kind of an older, outdated system that no one here really uses. So the first thing that I had to do was get an ECU in this car. So I reached out to my friends at Helltech and got their Plug and Play Elite 1500, which is amazing. It simplifies things so much. When I first knew that I had to swap the ECU, I was just stressing about wiring harness and all that stuff but luckily they have a simple plug and play solution. I got the Elite 1500, Justin installed it. We got all the sensors to go with it as well. So that is what I did with the ECU. Now, the whole fuel system on here was pretty cool. And at first I wanted to keep it because it has a surge tank in the back, which I will show you. But as I'm walking back here, I will let you know, we decided to ditch the surge tank setup, even though I thought it was cool because it was kind of outdated. Here in the back, you'll see the surge tank, which is pretty awesome. Um, it was done to the car by Tonsai Service. However, all the lines would have needed to be replaced. The wiring was a little outdated. So instead of troubleshooting that and really, and yeah, ignore all the other stuff in here, I've been ordering parts and shipping them here for months. So it's kind of like Christmas back here and I'm just gonna, try and contain my enthusiasm and only open stuff when I'm ready to actually like install it on the car. But that is what's going on back there. So it did have a surge set up in it, which is cool. But like I said, wiring was a little confusing and it overcomplicated things. And nowadays with the pumps that we can get, it's not really necessary. So so instead of redoing that, I decided to go with a Dschmarks DW400 single drop-in pump that is more than capable for my power goals for this car. Now, goals-wise, I just want like a super, super responsive 350, 400 horsepower. I feel like I'm not asking for a lot, but going into this, I did understand that there is a lot of mystery with what exactly has been done to the engine and all that and what it's capable of. So I think right now expectations is like a good 350 to 400 horsepower is what I was going into this build wanting. The DW400 by Dschwartz pump is totally capable of that. So instead of over complicating things, we just dropped one of those things in. Justin also redid all of the fuel lines. So I just don't don't have to worry about that. I mean, this car has been sitting for many, many years and hasn't been running, like I said, for, I mean, no one has really seen this car run in our circle. So I definitely wanted to redo all the fuel lines. So we did that as well. Um, along with the Dschwartz DW400 pump, I have their regulator and filter. The filter is actually mounted in the front of the car. So it's super easy to access. I'd never done that before, but Justin decided to put it there and Adam and I were both like, huh, that's, that's convenient. <laughs> so that is under the hood towards the front. Honestly, the car was also missing just a bunch of little random pieces. There was no AC, there was no fuel rail or injectors, uh, bolts here and there. Like it's just kind of the more you looked, the more like little random things that were missing. So again, Justin from Morfab Industries went through the entire car. I ordered like a full AC kit that is mostly on the car. We're just missing like one line to finish it off. Um, but because there was a lot of other little pieces I needed to get, I reached out to MA Performance to just get some advice on different options and directions I could go. So with them, I ended up getting the Airmotive fuel rail for this car. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I'm running the Dschwartz 1500cc injectors. There was also a few other things that I wanted to do that I'll probably end up doing back in Florida with MA Performance, such as their coil pack kit that they have, um, a new O2 housing for the car, because I still have a stock one on it right now. So there's definitely gonna be a ton of build content coming up for this car and big shout out to MA Performance as well for their advice and Adam of course since he has been through all of this and tested things and gone different directions so between Adam and MA Performance I mean they they know Evo so it's really easy for me to reach out to them and just get advice which is amazing because I don't know much about the Evo platform like the specifics of it 
and different options that are out there. To get this build to where it is now, it would not have been possible without Haltech, Dishworks, MA Performance, Justin from Morfab Industries, and obviously Adam for helping me in this new journey into the world of Evos that I am now embarking on. Like I said, I knew from the first time that I drove his car that I wanted my very own, and I definitely would not have been able to connect all the dots and make it happen, especially with the car having been here in Connecticut without Adam. So I really appreciate all the help from everyone, really. Like, I am just so excited about this car. It makes me feel so good. Like, I just, oh, driving it, it just makes me so happy. And I am still pinching myself. Like, I can't believe I somehow got this car. I told you, I knew I would get one. I knew I would have to have one from the moment I drove it. I did not expect it to be this soon. This car was just so weirdly all of the things that I would have wanted. It was so weird and it was special. You know, there's that extra special component with the fact that like Hansai Service built it, the sixth interior, like I said, I mean, look, look at that. Look at that beautiful cluster from the six. Like it's so pretty. We've got these HKS gauges here, which is pretty sick. And look, climate controls in the glove box because cool factor and because you know we need we need the cool gauges to have their space so i am just pinching myself i love this car so much um and the last piece that i want to tell you guys about just to get it said on the channel and so it's out there um is just the information that i know about this car pre tommy and pre anyone in our circle so i was doing a lot of digging and research and I randomly came across this reddit forum that had this car on it and all the information about it and supposedly what had been done um, from this person that owned it before Tommy and what might have been done in Japan and I say might because I just there's no real way to confirm until we take the engine apart so I'm gonna bring that up and just really quick tell you guys that overall it is a five with an eight head on it that was rebuilt. Now supposedly the bottom end was still everything that was built by Tonsai Service and it just had an eight head that was redone at least maybe within the past few years. But in the depths of Reddit, I found my car and all the things that have supposedly been done to it. And now I also know exactly what parts Tommy took off of it. But like, you know, it's fine. I did it. I did it. And I'm just, I'm reading from like the Reddit post right now so I can get everything correct. Let's see. Um, so yeah, so apparently the owner, oh, that is weird. I just realized the previous owner, his Reddit name is my birthday month and my racing number, 77. Oh, so weird. There's been so many weird things happening. There's been like just numbers. I'm seeing sevens everywhere since I got this car and that is weird. I did not notice that until right now. Wow. Anyway, um, so the previous, 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 previous owner says that the car showed up with a cracked cylinder head. So he did a, a head swap swap the cams, change the single HKS valve springs for super techs, and the following are the HKS parts. So pistons, rods, clutch, intake, which I know Tommy stole. It's really expensive and super rare. So he took that off of it. Um, external wastegate. The turbo setup that was on this car is no longer on it. I have an Evo 9 turbo setup, which Adam says was his all-time favorite um, and still is his favorite in terms of response. So that's the direction that I went for the turbo setup. It's just stock 9. Let's see. Oh, it does have an HKS exhaust on it that I think I showed you guys in the B-roll. The surge tank setup with twin pumps and trunk. Um, all the gauges that I showed you guys. Um, the F-Con standalone that is no longer in here. Um, it does still have the ARC rear sway bar on it. ARP head studs, Super Tech single springs, Super Tech titanium retainers. Oh, Fortune auto coilovers, which the coilovers are actually in really good condition on this car. Like they look brand new, barely used, which I don't remember that when I looked at it last. So that is like really awesome to see. And already like driving it around, it feels great, which normally I don't get that lucky. So that was cool. <laughs> I have the clear timing cover on it. Um, oh, and the 
cam gears has 727 cams in it. I know I'm kind of all over the place. It's just because you know these are all things that have been written about the car. I'm just I'm so happy and I'm so happy to take all of you guys on this journey with me into the Evo world. Yeah, I'm sure I left some information out. I'm still just like taking everything in and I could not be more excited about this car. Like look at this! It's so oh I love it. And th this is swapped interior too. Like all these weird things that I would have loved. And it's just here, it's this car. I, I had to have this car. Um, no regrets, no regrets whatsoever. I'm so glad we were able to work out a deal grant and I was able to pull the trigger on this way sooner than I ever thought I would. And I'm excited that I just talk about it. I've had this car for months now and now I can finally share it with all of you. Also, I'm not sure if it was obvious like how amazing of a condition the interior is in. And this car hasn't even been detailed yet. Hasn't been cleaned at all. And it looks this good. So, yeah. I'm so happy. That is it for this video. I'm so happy. I love this car. If I was a car, I'd be this car. So, yeah. On that note, I will see you guys in the next video. Get down.